The largest arteries and veins draining into and out of the heart are known as the great vessels. The great arteries are the origins of every artery in the human body, and the great veins are the final destination of almost every vein. In this fifth episode of our heart mini-series, I'm going to quickly cover the key anatomy of the great vessels and how they relate to one another. My name's Connor, and welcome to Anatomy 101. The most famous of all of the great vessels is undoubtedly the mighty aorta. This huge elastic artery carries all of the oxygenated blood leaving the left side of the heart and travelling out towards the rest of the body. In healthy people, the aorta has a diameter of up to 2 cm, big enough to stick your thumb inside. The aorta begins at the base of the left ventricle in a region known as the aortic orifice. Here it is a three-cusped valve that we'll discuss in more detail in a later episode. Remember that just distal to this valve is the origin of the coronary arteries. The aorta then travels within the heart superiorly, anteriorly and slightly to the right. It is closely associated with the pulmonary trunk along its route. The first part of the aorta is known as the ascending aorta and continues upwards to the level of the second right costal cartilage where it exits the pericardium and enters the superior mediastinum, becoming known as the arch of the aorta. The arch of the aorta curves leftwards and slightly posteriorly through the superior mediastinum, producing three main branches as it does. The first is the brachiocephalic trunk, then the right common carotid artery, then the right subclavian artery. These go on to supply the head and both of the upper limbs. Lastly, the aorta begins its descent into the lower parts of the body and travels posteriorly to the heart. It is now known as the descending thoracic aorta. The other major artery leaving the heart is the pulmonary trunk. This artery is even greater in diameter than the aorta, reaching 3 cm in healthy adults. It carries deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle into the two lungs. The pulmonary trunk starts in the lower right ventricle, in a region known as the conus arteriosus or pulmonary infundibulum. From here it travels superiorly and posteriorly before dividing into left and right pulmonary arteries, one to each lung, at approximately the level of the sixth thoracic vertebra. Like the aorta, the pulmonary trunk is closed within serous pericardium for most of its route. We can see that the aorta and pulmonary trunk actually spiral around one another as they travel upwards. This means the pulmonary trunk actually starts anterior to the aorta before eventually sitting to its left. The right pulmonary artery passes posterior to the aorta and superior vena cava to enter the right lung, and the left pulmonary artery passes anterior to the descending aorta to enter the left lung. The four pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood from both of the lungs back into the left atrium of the heart. They pass through the fibrous pericardium and are covered by serous pericardium whilst abutting the heart. They enter the superior part of the left atrium, and between them is the oblique pericardial sinus, as mentioned in a previous video. The pulmonary veins form the most posterior part of the base of the heart, and are at least partially responsible for anchoring the heart in place on its posterior wall. Lastly, we have the superior and inferior vena cavae. Both of these take deoxygenated blood from the body back to the right atrium of the heart. More specifically, the superior vena cava takes blood from above the diaphragm, whilst the inferior vena cava collects it from below the diaphragm. The superior vena cava has no valves, unlike most veins in the body, as its draining is usually gravity assisted. It's approximately 7 cm long in the adult and is formed by the joining of the right and left brachiocephalic veins at the level of the first intercostal space. The whole lower part of the superior vena cava is enclosed in pericardium. The thoracic part of the inferior vena cava is very short, as the heart sits practically on top of the diaphragm. It enters the pericardium at the level of the 8th thoracic vertebra and drains into the inferior part of the right atrium. The inferior vena cava also has no valves, but for a different reason to the superior vena cava. Instead of gravity, the respiratory movements of the diaphragm help to push blood back upwards towards the heart. And there we go, that's everything you need to know about the great vessels of the heart. The best place to go from here would be to watch our videos on the arteries and veins of the body, which will give you a greater appreciation for where all this blood goes to and comes from. That's all for now. I hope you learned something and have a great day.